Hello, and uh, welcome to London Glass Blown. Uh, the show is called Vetro 2. It's the second installment of an exhibition based on Venetian techniques and their, their approach to glass making. First one was in 2014, and the response was amazing, but the response of the artists was what was really exciting. There are lots of new bodies of work that have been developed. So, gallery here at London Glass Bank decided to, to revisit that theme, and we've had a really amazing response for everyone involved. Uh, my name is Tim Rawlinson, by the way, I'm one of the resident artists. We've got work on display here in the show. And I just give you a sort of virtual tour of the exhibition and the work that's on display. Um, if you are interested in anything that you see, please be in contact with the gallery. Um, Isabel is uh, tonight on the chat. She's got a catalogue that's there, either in the live chat or in one of the different message boxes. So if you want to see a more detailed um, portfolio of the work with prices and dimensions, etc., please refer to that. For any questions and anything, please be in touch. I'd like to start over here with, um, we've got two artists. Down below is uh, Laura McKinley, who uh, used to be a resident artist here. She uh, went to do a master's at the Royal College of Art a couple of years ago. And this body of work is developed from her time there. You've got different uh, hot sculpted glass forms, so they're solid forms which she then has assembled together and laminated to create one solid piece. So they don't come apart or one form. Um, and the layers between have been polished. So you get this wonderful reflection of light between them. Uh, they're very playful. She, she looks at sort of spinning tops. You'll see some other pieces in the show, some child's building blocks and that sort of theme in her MA. And these are development on that. Maybe there's a, a more of a sophisticated approach to it, a bit more abstract than the uh, reflection of exactly the children's play toys and things of that nature. And you've got these lovely gold gilded tops, which I think the idea of gold, as you see with the few pieces here, is a tip towards the Venetian design aesthetic. Anyone's been to Venice and will have certainly seen some of the very elaborate uh, spaces that they have there, all sort of gold leaf and building and sort of an idea of opulence and their uh, decadence. But what I really like about them is, especially with this round one here, you get wonderful mirroring, sort of almost a fisheye exposing the whole gallery, which is very beautiful. Uh, these are quite large scale pieces. Put my hand on the side. They're quite considerable uh, pieces of glass. Um, and, I, and I should say the tops are, yeah, it's actually bronze. So it's not, um, it's not glass, it's uh, bronze, which is turned in a lay. Very beautiful. Above is another Laura, Laura Quinn. And this is a light that she has made, which has got individual pieces of glass, which is then formed within a sort of silicon mesh. So it makes it very sort of tactile, and sort of move it, put it together. And I believe it's remote control light, so you can sort of have different hues and colors and things. Uh, whatever your mood. And uh, these are lamp work pieces of glass, which will use a different sort of technique of putting together glass using a torch rather than gathering glass out from the furnace. You would have a very precise hot torch, almost like a sort of Bunsen burner that you might use in school. And you'd hold the glass over it, get it hot enough to start to bend and twist it. So she make lots of these different components and then put together for the final composition. Uh, very happy to have Laura here in the show. There's a few more pieces of hers that we'll see. Move on to the next artist, Sarah Wibley, 
who's uh, been a resident artist here at London Glass Bank for quite a few years now. She finished her MA at the uh, RCA about 10 years ago. Um, and she works with bone vessels, which uh, utilize more of a sort of Swedish technique to growl, where you will sandblast away layers into a cup, create these different decorative effects. Uh, she has created these new, they're usually quite thick forms she works on. These are much more delicate blown vessels. And the effect that she's produced here of graving away into the color, creating a sort of texture, um, sorry, we're creating something like a textual piece of clothing. So it's reflecting lace and different things like that. You've got the island of Murano in Venice, which is famed for its glass making. And then you have the island of Murano, which is uh, silk and lace making. That's a beautiful shadow you just kept there, Abby. Uh, it's really lovely how you see the glass going, the light penetrating the gaps that she has sandblasted away through the color and then through the vessel in that way. To me, it's what sort of looked like when you get, when it's been raining and you feel the water effects on windows and things like that. It's, uh, very beautiful pieces. Uh, and with this one, we've got the color fade through from the sort of amber and orange through to the white. Very beautiful. Uh, moving on, these are some of Peter Layton's pieces. And there's a few things of Peter's, obviously, in the show. Peter being the founder of uh, Under Glass Room. And these, Peter did some pieces called Verano, which, as I said earlier, is the island in Venice which specializes in lace making and this sort of threaded technique of drawing with the this very fine white glass, replicating that. And these sort of moving on from that style of making, uh, we've sort of gone for this cloud form of the exterior. Yes, these are pieces which is the idea of clouds, he's looking at various different ways of interpreting. So these are new pieces that are tackling that subject matter. And it's certainly something that seems to be really focused in his mind at the moment. He's currently always been returning to that theme of the cloud. And what, what's really nice with these pieces is the color is the inner bubble. And this is all solid clear glass around it. So you get wonderful optics of the blue reflecting into it and the white as well doubling up and back. And it's just really nice how it allows that blue to then almost look floating within and capturing that. Next artist we'll talk about, this is a, this is a collaborative piece between two artists, uh, one English, James Devro, other American, David Patchy. And they've uh, got together to, to make this really remarkable hot sculpted piece of glass. So the color you're seeing, the color pattern, is done by David, David Patchen, and it's Marini, which is a very typical way of working color in Venice. It's a very precise way of putting cane together to make what we would call a marini or a small tile of glass. So you can see sort of, if you take one of these windows, that would be a single marini, which is made up of then, I don't know, maybe four different layers of cane work. One of those layers having at least 10 separate canes within it. So there's a lot of elaborate making, a lot of uh, painstaking prep work to create each tile of glass or marini to then make up this whole network of that. 
So you spend a lot of period of time just pulling individual canes and a whole bunch of time assembling those different components to make the marini, which are then carefully prepped, polished, and put together in the hot shop to make so what we call a skin a color or a color cut to compose of the marini. David Patchen will then send that from America to England, and James will then put together that color network into this form of hot sculpted glass that you see. And uh, the signature thing to James is the sort of chipped edge. So when the glass is hot, James will tweeze it out, make it sort of thin along an edge. And when the temperature is right, there's a little rock hammer and it just will knock that edge of glass away uh, with the glass still on the blowing line, which creates this sort of fractured edge. She then will heat through, so you can see I'm touching it. It's not sharp, but it created that, but it's kept that fracture, which is really nice how it distorts the light and the color. And uh, they're really exciting pieces to have. They're probably the largest scale pieces we have here in the gallery. It's a solid piece, so it's quite heavy. And they've made this lovely frame for it to be lifted up as well from the ground. Uh, there's another one of the pieces over there, which we'll come to at the end. Uh, if you want to see more of the work they do together, that'll be in the catalogue that's online. So you can see, I think, the definition of the marini a bit clear in this piece of these rings, but then the individual bubble captured between. And if you look at then the edge, you'll see then this green that runs through against the orange. They are really stunning beautiful pieces. This piece is actually sold. Um, and we're lucky enough to have one of David's pieces uh, in the gallery as well. We'll come to that a bit later. Here are uh, some more of Peter's pieces. Um, these are a variation on his kimono series, which is also inspired by a trip to Japan, Japan, but it's sort of painted gold relief on the openings. And particularly on this one, it's got really quite a lot of detail that runs around. And again, I think that continuation of gold for the Venetian aesthetic that uh, really highlights the opening beautifully on these pieces and they're, they're pretty very popular. I particularly like the gold and the blue combination. I think it's really uh, striking the way it works together. These are hot, uh, these are blown pieces. So when these, these are hot, you sort of crumple it all together, which creates these different cavities. Um, and it's sort of a little bit of allowing the glass itself to move when it's hot, create these forms. So you create something really quite individual in that way. And I just have a little tips in the way. Really nice pieces. And then these have actually been acid dipped as well. So it's quite nice against the sort of sparkle of the gold. You've got a nice matte relief of the finish. Uh, over here we have, we've got Lane Rowe, who was a resident artist in the studio for many years. He now set up his own glass studio. Uh, still, uh, an active member of the studio here. This is his, this is large quill and ink pieces. He's done sort of arrangements that are smaller. This is, this is a much larger piece. It's blown, but it's very solid. It sort of beautifully reflects in the corners. And then this very large feather structure with cane work. Uh, this is sort of the most classical Venetian technique using cane work. So you can see the individual canes that make up the feather. Central core of the sort of purple cane that runs between. And then these sort of gray and white ones on the other side. 
very technical um highly skilled maker lane creates a piece like this it's incredibly difficult and it's processes and techniques that he's been working with for many years and well over 10 years he's been trying to sort of refined use of cane work in his woven series, which we'll see an adaption of later. These now beautiful full and ink pieces of uh, his ornithology collection. And, uh, if you are lucky enough to see, he, he made an entire collection of feathers for the, 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 Royal Ch the Chelsea Flower Show and the, the British Glass Biennale, he had them as well. So a metal framework huge, about 10 feet tall, consisting of lots of different feathers. We had a smaller arrangement here on the wall earlier in the year, but that was something that was really, truly really spectacular. It's, uh, his use of feathers is something um, that he's continuously working on developing and uh, been really impressive to see. Uh, moving on to Laura, Laura Quinn whose light piece we saw at the beginning, he uses some blown vessels. Uh, again, has that sort of tactile policy, and it's sort of set into a silicon base, which is then a cut out of the glass. It just means you sort of have a sort of playful nature. I just sort of really like the sound that you can, that you can hear. <laughs> yeah, put on, they really capture that. Uh, a beautiful pieces made of wood with haptic below. Uh, next is an artist that's new to the gallery, a uh, Hungarian artist, uh, Balaslas Kaliki, and his blown forms, uh, very textural, so you can, the glass color is on the outside of the form, so you can feel the different undulations and ribs. This very fine threaded technique sort of trailing um, and because it's on the outside he's been able to chemically manipulate the color so it's been reduced in the glory hole which gives it that silver sheen and glow over it and there's two more in the middle of the gallery here come around see those slightly different textures and uh configurations on these two and they they're both all three of them are mounted on wood bases and they come away from that that's how they're mounted a solid wood base very beautifully put together um well, over here we've got a couple more of laura's pieces that are more that sort of child uh like playful nature of her work um Propeller, so sort of like spinning tops, but again with the turn bronze tops. And she looks at the Venetian technique of Incarmo. So we've got this clear orange and so opaque white, two separate blown bubbles that are then stuck together when they're hot to create one full form. Uh, and then the bronze is applied afterwards. Very beautiful pieces. Um, this is this is one of my pieces, which I've looked at type of technique known as ice glass. So you can see these sort of fractures and cracks sparkle in the light. That's achieved by when the piece is hot on the blowing iron, plunging it into a bucket of cold water. And it fractures the outside skin of the glass. Uh, and then you sort of heat that through so that the piece is safe, but it's retained that quite aggressive um, jump from temperatures. So the fractures are still there within the skin because I've cut through the piece. You can see through to the underside. And the way they catch the light, sort of jewel light, have a sort of sparkle through them. Uh, the color inside is different bricks and colored glass. Might sort of make it look like it's suspended. Um, these different chips of glass 
put together so that they're blown through the hollow piece. See my friend come through the other side. Uh, and it's playing about with colors that will react together. So there's a lot of experimentation to try and get that final right. I like that you the difference of the outside color through to the inside. And that's why a lot of my work is all cut open, sort of reveal those inner layers. Um, and yeah, I'm really happy with this piece. I've had a really good response. Uh, you would usually use this sort of technique of ice glass or fracturing on tableware, sort of blown, very thinly blown um, wine glasses and things like that. So this would do it with something very thick and expose and cut through it and polish it with the in the I hadn't really seen that much glass, so I was trying to use that in a new way. I wasn't sure if it would if, if it would work, if it would remain, but really, really happy how that's turned out. Uh, over here we've got a wall piece by Scott Benningfield, who is an American artist uh, based in Ireland. And he was he's famed for working with Venetian cane techniques. So either simple lines, as you see in the plate, or more complex sort of twisted cane forms. Um, and this box really just shows a whole different variety of Venetian techniques. So it's a wooden box suspended on the wall with then individual glass pieces which are inside of it. It's a really beautiful collection. And one that really shows off Venetian cane making techniques. Uh, now we come to Catherine Schilling, uh, the former creator, curator of the gallery and a long-standing resident artist. She's got an ensemble of wall piece of these sort of mosaic tiles put together. I think actually it's from glass that's made in Venice. And then the smaller piece here showing this movement blue to red, which is highlighting about climate change and moving from a cold to a hot planet, but also just showing how the temperature is rising considerably at the moment uh, across the world. And this is a piece that is very much about illustrating sort of global warming crisis that is potentially involving. And you can see that with the with the cane pieces below, each one is meant to resemble a country, but again, it has that fade and cold colors through to hot. So, idea of global warming. Uh, it's, it's obviously quite a frightening thought, but it's one that is great to be highlighted by prominent artists like Catherine, and I think done very beautifully. The frame in particular, the mosaic, each one of these are individual tiles. And it's not perfectly flat, but it's lovely texture that runs across. Uh, and it's really immaculately put together. Uh, captured in this wooden frame. I absolutely love it, it's fantastic. So the whole thing is available as an entire ensemble or these are individual pieces for sale. Really quite wonderful, uh, challenging piece by Catherine. Uh, moving on here, we've got a uh, piece by Peter, which is again a variation on his sort of Burano forms. He's been looking at mounting these pieces on bases looking at the idea of busts and things of that nature. Beautiful amount of clear that runs around it. So you've got the optical effects of the cane reflecting in the edges of the glass. 
Uh, he used to do a lot of these pieces with uh, Elliot Walker, who was a resident artist here. And recently he's developed his new works with Liam Reeves, his work we shall see later on. Uh, Liam is a technician at the uh, Royal College of Art in London. Peter, who, and he, he has mastered a career on Venetian art techniques. And Peter's really enjoyed making these new works with Liam and taking them in a new direction. And the idea of the sort of threaded, very fine network of lines, something that really appeals to Liam's way of making. And these are some variations on that. So the piece that you just saw had that very thick layer of clear glass around so it has that optical effect of what's within whereas these are much more blown out and the color is purely on the surface uh pete is obsessed with pebbles he's now the beach comer, and i think these forms reflect the sort of his pebble collection uh, the black and white piece here is that like spirograph scribbles a white line on the black and it's you know almost Jackson Pollock has I think really lines within it. I'm, I, I, I really like these pieces. I think the really interesting developments that Peter has done with Liam and it's nice to really see that sort of pebble form which is so obsessed with the H asymmetric form take a little bit of a new life. Uh, and these are mounted on glass bases, so they're glued to the base. Really lovely. Uh, above, one of our resident artists, Bruce Marks, his uh, representation of minimal animal forms continues. Most most of the bird series, these are his fish forms. So it's a Venetian technique of engraving away, almost a tuto esque, but creating these windows of color within. So you can trace through the outer surface to show the color within, almost like scales of a fish that run across. Uh, if I get one of them down, you see, so it's a blown form, like a fish mouth comes up above. And yeah, these windows that are engraved in it all the way down. It's, uh, Really lovely tactile piece of mold. Bruce is inspired a lot by sort of Brenda Susie and those are pure forms of sculpture. These are we knew to follow that, which is really interesting. Behind there's one of Laura's sort of playful pieces, composed. Again, separate bits of glass that are then laminated together with the bronze piece in hand turn. Um, and yeah, almost like child building blocks of these different parts that are put together. Really immaculately done. Very lovely work. Uh, behind me is um, one, of our, one of our newest resident artists, Scylla. This is a solid cast piece of glass. Uh, and it goes from a thick base with a thin point. You can see this lovely fade of a dark concentrated color up to this lovely variation in blue, right? See at the top. And the texture you're seeing behind, she has used the Venetian technique of cold working the glass known as the tuto. So she's carved into the back of the piece, create that wonderful texture all along. Uh, really nice and tactile. So that's what you could see when you were looking through the other side. Like I said, I really love how you've got this almost black blue. And then as you slowly move up, Coming through to this gorgeous array of clear and intense sort of cobalt blues in the middle. Uh, almost like the sea. And I, I think there's a sort of a, a, there's the inspiration of jagged mountain landscapes 
which uh, around her family is native Cyprus. I also think maybe the, the rich blue seas there have had inspiration to this piece as well. Uh, this is the largest piece Stiller has done so far. Uh, really expertly finished, sharp corners, geometrically sound. It's a really wonderful piece. Really nice to see how she's developing in the studio. Uh, next, this is a new piece by Lane Rowe, whose feathers we saw, or ornithology. Uh, this is an acorn, which is very cleverly put together with the different cane techniques. Once they said the, the, the use of cane in the hot shop is probably the most synonymous thing with Venetian glass baking. Lane has used different techniques here. We've got these clear white canes that are blown through this green to the body of the acorn. And these ones here are cut into canes. So a little bit like birds, uh, Bruce's fish, revealing the color underneath. So these much smaller little windows, which give the detail of the color there. And then this hot sculpted leaf as well. Pretty beautiful piece. Uh, this one has sold, but he will be making more. Uh, it's the very first one he's done, and everyone here has been really, really taken with it. It's uh, really nice to see him moving from abstract works into thing into using his homeworks to create more figurative pieces and still life pieces. Uh, very successfully, I would say, too. Beautifully done. Uh, this is one of my class pieces. So, got blown layers of color within, which I then get exposed to heat again in a kiln, in a mold, and the inner layers start to move and distort. These sort of remind me of uh, some compositions of uh, like Hubble telescope images. Um, but just sort of looking at ink in water, and that's the cooling of color. It's got a semi-translucent finish, so it's not fully optically polished. It just means it acts more of a vessel for light. It's got that lovely glow to it, which uh, I'm really pleased with. It just constantly looks warm, which I'm really happy about. Uh, another cast piece here by the eminent uh, Colin Reed. Uh, and it has this patuto carving in the middle and underneath. Which again, is a same with Tiller's work. That's a very classically Venetian cold work technique. Uh, when I say cold work, I mean literally working the glass when it's cold. So with a lot of my work, it's just with cutting and polishing with the glass when it's in its cold state. Same with Colin. He cast these layers of color. So this sort of painted layers of color between individual slabs of glass. They cast together. The cast, I mean, they're put into a mold, into a kiln, they've got hot, and it's cast into one form. Then when they say cold work, when the piece is back down to room temperature, you can carve into the glass, like the Tuto effect or you can polish a surface, which is how you can see through these inner layers. And the combination of a polished surface with a tutu underneath works really beautifully against the light, gets the dappled technique. And uh, Colin is probably the cast master of this country. It's a really stunning piece. Uh, these are some more of Lane's pieces. The sort of more abstract use of cane to be blown vessels that are hollow. Again, this carved into cane network. You can see very textural, uh, really tactile, uh, tactile pieces. You sort of want to feel the different ribs and grooves. So you can see inside that the uncut layer of cane, how it's smooth, beautifully twisted into a point. And on the outside, it's cut into when it's cold, 
using uh, an engraving wheel, which exposes all those inner layers. These pieces are called mandala uh, in sizes. And it's very beautifully made piece of glass. Uh, this piece here is by Charlotte Rogers. Uh, she calls it foam glass. Um, a technique that I'm not familiar with, but I think it's using different powders of glass that react to sort of foam up in this way. And it's a really interesting textural uh, finish that she's managed to achieve. Quite unusual to see that effect in glass. Uh, was volcanic in that way. Um, she's discussed about improvisation and jazz, inspira uh, jazz inspiration of working in a sort of free, uh, almost a launch pad, but without knowing the end result, seeing where the process leads and takes you. Uh, very innovative and interesting technique. Uh, this is one of my pieces. It's a solid cast cube. Uh, it's going to be heavy. It's the largest one that I've made. And again, it has that sort of frosted finish. Just gives a bit of intrigue to what is within. It also gives it that and glow as it holds the light rather than necessarily refracting it out. Uh, I'll create nine separate columns of glass and then cast them all together within and then grind, polish the sides so you can cut through the outer layer of color, create sort of windows inside. Um, I sort of wanted to be more like an abstract painting. People like Morris Louis and Harold Frankenteller, these sort of abstract swipes of color. Uh, again, that movement is when it's hot within the film. Especially in the bottom, the blue really has that liquid sort of feeling. Um, I sort of call it static motion. So the act of movement is then frozen as we take the heat away in the film and uh, end up with a static movement, a moment frozen in time. Um, these are really complicated pieces, not something that I managed to be able to replicate again in the past few years. So it's the first returning to this Tesseract series. Uh, here we have some more of Bruce's uh, fish, and um, with some more minimal colors of the white and the blue. So the blown pieces, the blue on the inside and the white on the outside. And then when it's cold and he's engraved these windows, you see the blue against the white within. Um, much purer versions, uh, really very lovely. Because you have the transparency of the blue, and that's the light flow through. Seems to have a kind of affinity with the idea of animal forms, the birds and the fish and giraffe heads something that seems to be replicated a lot in his work. Uh, some more of my pieces up here. I was working with this ice glass technique of fracturing the outside of the form, creating this crystal crack look. Uh, and it's with the Oculus color style. Almost like the evil eye, sort of floating ball of color encapsulated within so the two variations on that over here one using the Vesuvius color it's more of a an oval form with the cracking I almost feel like it's an alien egg that's hatched so mm -hmm. uh, been a really happy with the optical quality of the cracks with its rainbow reflection of light so it's just sparkles dazzles the reflections that you get given out by dappled light are really interesting as well. I'm really pleased with them. So 
Here we've got one of uh, Catherine's pieces of fused glass from more like a sort of traditional way of working with fusing these stringers of glass in the same way that you might make a cane, uh, which is a long pulled out piece of glass that Rain uses in his work. Catherine has then fused them together to create this form with Antarctic confluence. I'm lucky enough to go uh, to Alaska and see different ice forms. And this work has been an inspiration on that. So Scott, Scott Benningfield, is someone who exclusively works with pain, really. And that shows the different variations we've got with that one component in these pieces. We've got these lovely twisty cane details here. Uh, it's a very laborious um, exercise of putting together these different patches of colour to create the final vessel. But the end result is wonderful. These are almost like sort of floating clouds, with the chevron version. And um, we've actually got a coloured piece of Scott, which is different from usually the white and black you see. Uh, really nice to see Scott playing with colour in that way. And the frosted out exterior, which sort of again means the light sort of held within the vessel. Very beautiful. I mean, I'm probably, this is probably the most technically complex piece in the show. This is David Patchen, who, as I said, has collaborated with James Devereux on some other pieces. This is one of his own pieces. We're very lucky to have it over from America, who have rarely seen it in this country. But this vibrancy, vibrant explosion of colour seen before you. Each little piece is a marini tile which has been made and then put together create this network of the piece. So if you look at this one, each dot is an individual piece of chain, which has then been put together and pulled to make just this one tile. So you can see how many hundreds of tiles are made, that, you know, this whole composition of the piece. And you've got these beautiful windows. So, you can go really close. You can see inside of the window through to the other side of the color. Pull back and see just how many there are across this piece. And it's a substantial piece, a huge piece of glass, which is blown, hollow form. Um, and yet yeah, this level of expertise of marini making is not something that you see much in this country. Uh, we're really lucky to have this piece in the gallery from America. Uh, and, uh, an artist of David's exceptional still it's wonderful to be able to see it in real life and not, not in a book. So if you're able to come to the gallery, I really invite you to come and give this piece closer attention. It really is fabulous. But we're making fireworks. <laughs> this sort of explosions of colour. Uh, yeah, very exciting too. Here we've got uh, a collaborative piece of Louis Thompson, Hannah Renmark, uh, of, which I think actually first came to life in our first intro show. So you've got this network of, again, like canes inside, or stringers of glass, and it's a blown form, and that network is encapsulated within. So they're frozen, they're solid, they, they don't move about. It almost looks like a sort of living organism that is grown within something. Uh, such an interesting play on a traditional theme, done in a very contemporary output. Um, and they've been working together to sort of develop this and push it forward over the past sort of 
six, seven years. Uh, pretty beautiful pieces. Color fade of the exterior thin, opaque, transparent, you see within. Like I said, the bone forms, and then it's this network of string, it's this hive, which is then encapsulated within these pieces. Really very beautiful. This new series is called Carmen Line. Uh, and then you'll be able to see images of that within our catalog, which you'll see below in the chat box. Above, uh, some more Peter's cloud vessels, again, this sort of undulated exterior to resemble cloud, and sort of blue and white cane trailing, uh, using that sort of Venetian technique. It almost looked more like uh, sweets, sort of candy floss twisted around the glass form. Uh, very prolific Peter. It's got quite a few different examples of work. As, as I showed earlier, with some more this sort of Verano technique type of forms. One in this disc that's mounted on the base, the sold, and this beautiful blue pebble form. So as I said, Peter has been working with artist Liam Reeves, who is a technician at the Royal College of Art, and he's one of the newest members of the team here. Uh, he's a very skilled maker who has done his own MA at the RCA about 10 years ago, which was focused on exploring the traditional Venetian techniques. And he really does embody what the soul of the show is about, of taking a traditional Venetian technique and trying to use it in a contemporary way within the glass form. So there's a couple of pieces in the show by Liam. This one here, uh, Postoric, this sort of organ type form, very large, with this beautiful twisted cane motif exterior. And interesting, he silvered the inside, which is how you've got this mirrored effect coming out through the glass, sort of a Jeff Koons style. Uh, very large, beautiful piece. And we're, we're thrilled to have Liam as one of the, the full-time members here in the, in the team. If you're lucky enough to come to the studio, see him blowing, real treat. Uh, Liam's also done this collaborative piece or pair of pieces with Anthony Scala, uh, sort of Venetian um, traditional tableware, but encapsulated within the hollow inner stem, you've got real silver leaf and you've got real gold leaf over there. Uh, very beautiful, minimal pieces. Um, Really nice to see these guys working together. Anthony sort of used this technique of encapsulating precious metals in his annulum series. It's really nice to see them in larger scale forms. It's a opaline white, so sort of a semi translucent white, holds the light in that rather unique way of lessons. Uh, and this is another piece for myself, which is a solid piece of glass with a purple exterior color. And inside is a network of canes that have been put together to create a hyperparaboloid hyper form or a Pringle shape. Uh, which was a very difficult exercise of suspending that in clear glass. And it was put to me as a commission um, by a former collector who unfortunately passed away, um, which was a tragedy you can see it completed, but something that I wanted to complete in his memory. Um, and I hope that he would be happy with the response that I've had to him in that way. Uh, 
I just really like how it has that floating feel within. And these windows are ground on six sides of the spherical cube, which is inspired by the Escher painting Other World. Trying to achieve there. Yeah. Finally, we've got a few more of Laura's um, pieces here and variation of spinning tops. Uh, beautiful bronze turned points as it's been cut into our Pachuto technique, which again is very sort of synonymous with Venetian cold working techniques. Uh, these ones are brand new here to the gallery for the show. Really beautifully expert done, probably frosted finish to it as well. Uh, and this is quite extraordinary, really, the detail of this turn bronze point you have on it. Uh, one last artist I'd like to show you is uh, Stephen Foster. Um, and it's much the same way in uh, David Patchen's Marini pieces, he's created Marini's which are then with, inside of solid glass, so rather than it being the exterior blown form, he's put together Marini and then just inside of this solid piece of glass, so you get sort of optical illusion of them being suspended, it's like rock balls. And, uh, very beautifully done. You also carved into the top, so it sort of distorts the surface of the glass. Again, a lot like if you're looking through water and the sort of sea and enemies and different underwater flower networks. Very beautifully done, very reasonably priced as well. So have a look at those on our catalogue. A real, a really nice piece, quite a treat. Uh, anyway, that's the tour. That's that's the show. I hope that you've uh, been inspired and captivated by the work that we've got on display. Um, such a variety of work really shows the unique nature of glass and that we've got one material and really quite a few similar Venetian techniques, but artists have used it in such a myriad of different ways, different outcomes. Um, as it really is an impressive array of work. If you're able to come and visit us in-house in London, we're open every day except Monday and Sunday, 10 to 6 o'clock. And like I said, the catalogue is below in the chat box. If you want any great details on pricing and sizes, please refer to that or give our member of our team a call. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed tonight. Thank you very much for joining us.